Welcome to San Antonio, Texas, Toyota Field, the beautiful spring evening, 77 degrees, slight breeze for this early season matchup, a battle of unbeatens on this young USL season. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Tyler Denning, Katie Goodman, we were here a week ago. We saw San Antonio get their first win of the season, and they lead the USL right now in goal scored. Right, a big win indeed. Started off the, the, the season with two ties and finishing out there with a big win that they really needed to carry that momentum. You can see that two of those six goals happened last weekend. They're looking to add more here, but San Antonio FC sitting right up top again. And the man that leads the charge, it is Lucas. Right, Lucas has done such a great job there on that left winger side. He's that box-to-box -box guy. He has an engine that never stops. He can take it from out wide. He can take it from the center of the field. So far, two goals for him. Really good stuff. So let's talk Monterey Bay. San Antonio has beat this team three times. Last meeting, they drew, but they like their chances tonight because they have another elite goal scorer. Right. You better hope that they're coming out here with a chip on their shoulder. One thing's for sure. They had a guy who's been hot off the bench. Tristan Traeger has done such a good job. He can come in. He finds himself the right side spot at the right time all the time there's no accident I can assure you he's parked there in the the center of the field and two goals in three games so expecting to get a little bit more out of him now that he's at a full hundred percent so both of these teams yet to lose a match both with one win two draws a battle of unbeatens something has to give here tonight at Toyota Field San Antonio FC Monterey Bay FC when we come back we'll give you starting lineups and kick the game off Three nuns were driving through Austin and they got a flat tire. They stop in front of a frost bank. Next thing you know, a frost banker walks out and changes their tire? Hold on, hold on. This can't be real. It's a real story. And the nuns? Yeah, they weren't even frost customers. Dude, you think I can be a nun? Not a chance, sister. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Yeah. Sick. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Right now, qualified buyers get 0% APR financing for 36 months on a rugged new 2024 Tundra. Offer ends April 1st. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Hi, sports fans. I'm Jeff Davis. Going head-to-head -head with insurance companies is no easy game. It requires determination, gamesmanship, and grit. That's why you need Davis Law Firm on your side. With over 25 years' experience, our team of around 150 in seven Texas cities has a winning track record of verdicts and settlements, many in the millions of dollars. And just like your favorite team, we play to win. If you're hurt in a car, truck, or commercial vehicle accident, call us at 444-4444. So if you want more, call the fours. At HEB, we're proud to offer over 6,000 products grown, harvested, or made by our fellow Texans. I saw miles and miles of Texas, all the stars up in the sky. I saw miles and It's all part of our commitment to preserving the future of Texas and supporting our Texas neighbors. Learn more about our sustainability efforts at OurTexasOurFuture.com. These two teams tied atop the table in the Western Conference on this young year. Fourth match for both. Both yet to lose two draws along with that lone win. So we will show the starting lineup for San Antonio FC and Katie. A change in the starting lineup. What's different for San Antonio? Right, well, we've got Shannon Gomez back. He was gone away on international duty, so he's going to be on the right flank doing what he does best, getting balls in and working hard. You've got Luke Hawkinson as well. He can be anywhere on the field at any time, Coach said. It, he can play any position, even possibly keeper. He's just not quite tall enough. I think Pablo Cisniega has that one. Look for number 18 as well, Hugo Mabongu. We saw him as a substitution in the last match for head coach Alan Marcina and San Antonio for the Union of Monterey Bay. We talked Tristan Traeger as their standout, two goals scored on the season. But who else in their starting lineup is to watch for? Right, well, Walmer Martinez is another one of those guys who can kind of play all over the field. He was left back in their last game, moved back to that right winger spot so that Grant Robinson can come in. Had been battling an injury, so he's pretty good. And then those two center backs back there, Charlie Guzman, Kai Green, they are really, really killer back there. 
Look for number 17 as well, Archimed Luther, his first name. He faced San Antonio in the last match for San Antonio of their season, played for Sacramento last year and really was a handful, a nod of the cap from Coach Marcina. So you see Pablo Cisniego, who will be in goal, named to the USL Team of the Week for his efforts in the win a week ago. Played a great match. That he did 11 saves so far on the season, uh, just falling right into that SAFC culture of showing up and giving your best. Anthony Siaha in key. Siaha is also one of those guys who has earned himself the first starting spot here in the first three games. He's been battling it out with Herrera, but has made his presence known getting that starting spot. That color, Katie, is doom. <laughs> so the colors for Monterey Bay FC, crisp, kelp, and that yellow is a doom. It's doom, like sand dunes, I guess. Sand dunes. Yeah, so showing up big for the crisp and kelp, as they say. Both these teams, five points. Monterey Bay coming off a 2-2 draw against Rhode Island FC, an expansion team in our league as we are underway. San Antonio coming off their 2-0 win last Saturday night against Colorado Springs. And we were talking prior to this match, stylistically, you expect to maybe see some of the same things we did last week? Um, yeah, I, I think it's working for SAFC, this possession mindset that they have going. They do a great job to move in and out and up the field, as you can see there, Hugo with the ball. Mitch Tanner there to collect, but it doesn't look too much like Monterey Bay FC is sitting back. I mean, I would say that was a bit of a, a higher press there off the get-go. So let's see how maybe they, they change things. Got a couple games now in, so lots of time to review game tape. Uh, it's, it's a different approach for a lot of these teams who are used to SAFC being such a direct team, moving up the ball through the center really quickly, very direct. But as you can see here, lots of side-to-side -side movement and good pace. Gomez dispossessed. Kendall Burks there, another one of those pieces here in the back line who has been so good for SAFC. His distribution, he's got that high IQ mentality, sometimes the only center guy back there, and he handles it well. Coach Marcina going with the sleek all-black look for Saturday night. Fifth-year head coach, USL Coach of the Week, 64 wins, 24 losses, 32 draws for the head coach that was at the helm for the 2022 USL Championship season for straight postseason for this group. First corner of the night, Monterey Bay to serve it in. Siega tested and will have to stay alive. That a good deflection on the bounce. It's a good punch out and well defended there from Kevin Lambert. A guy who really reads the game so well, both offensively and defensively. SAFC trying to get some clean possession going here. Not without this high press. Yeah, you had asked Coach Marcina. We expected to see another physical match. You said, is it an Oprah Winfrey show? <laughs> Explain what that means. Yeah, a card for you, a card for you, a card for you. Everyone's getting yellow cards out here tonight. And I think, you know, with SAFC, it's almost always to be expected. They're a physical team. They bring the heat, and teams tend to meet them where they're at. Uh, but Monterey Bay FC, I mean, imagine leaving all this way with a tie knowing that you really wanted to win. Um, it was a close game for them, and so you know they're going to bring their best stuff here. Ball bouncing around. A couple of good yet non-potent service balls from the sides from Monterey Bay thus far. Another one from the right. Trickling through, chance to reset. Early pressure from the visitors. Bit of a slip out there on the pitch. A lot of people have complained about that, but same for everyone. Oh, 
Monterey Bay doing a great job just of maintaining possession. I think they're a team that likes to play in possession. Something that Coach Yallop had mentioned they've improved on from previous seasons is their their technical and tactical ability there in the attacking third. They're a little more shifty, creative. They just do a really good job of, of getting in and finishing. There is Frank Yallop. He was the week two USL coach of the week. So back to back, we have the two coaches and coach of the week. Made quite the journey in our game. Head coach of the San Jose Earthquakes from 2001 to 03, two MLS Cup titles. He coached the Canadian national team for two years. Then MS MLS stops at LA for the Galaxy, the Chicago Fire. Been around the USL as well for the two-time MLS coach of the year. Also played as well with the Tampa Bay Mutiny in the MLS. He played in the Premier League as well with Ipswich Town. Not so much around the Premier League anymore, but the fact is that he played there when they were there. And what a great coach. He's just been all over all the leagues here in, in the U.S. Would you get in talking with him of his early impressions of their season thus far? Yeah, he's happy with it. He's happy the way the new guys have meshed with the older crew, and he's liking what he's seeing in the attacking third. Um, of course, there are things that you're going to have to work out as you move through season. It's early, so all to be expected, but all in all, very happy uh, that they're undefeated right now. It's a team that went 11-15-8 last year, did not qualify for the playoffs. But right now, dominating the possession battle. <laughs> run up the middle is pushed out tough to do there quite a bit of traffic to get through but sometimes that works good on SAFC to recycle and spread the field as you can see they're trying to be patient create seams in through the middle a little different than what we saw last week with Colorado Springs in their initial foray trying to feel out we've seen Colorado Springs press up a little Right, and I would argue that they're starting to kind of adopt that mindset a little bit, um, sitting back a little more. I think they realize that when they high-press San Antonio, it just creates too many scenes. Tough tackle there. Have a look back at it. It's Carlos Guzman. Mm, not too sure. Looked like his teammate that came in. Yeah, took yeah. Him out. Yeah, just a little bit of a shoulder check maybe from behind. Throw him off balance, but I wouldn't call that a card. First corner of the match. We talked a lot about San Antonio's corner game last match. What do you want to see tonight? Um, finishing earlier, I think. We've seen it a couple of times where they hustle and they kind of play to their competitor, right? Instead of really setting more of the tone, something we've been for that thought. The ball bouncing around and that will be our first goal. So capitalize. We had talked early goals for San Antonio. They may lead the league, but had just one prior to that netted by Carter Manley. Carter Manley already adding a second goal to the stat sheet this season. He ended last season with a goal already on par breaking that record great stuff from him he has such a strong physical presence look at this chip in from mitch tainer he's there to receive the deflection of course or here hernandez puts it in and he does what we all want to see the bicycle kick into the opposite side netting now that is just beautiful that's when typically you see for monterey bay defensively that it's cleared out you see Two defenders had an opportunity, but nice job by Manley to stay with it, put a foot on it, take to the ground, and most importantly, put it in net. Right, and Tyler, did I not just say I wanted to see early goals? Well, they've checked that box. There's your nope. first Easter <laughs> present. There you go. So I'll San Antonio it. strikes in the seventh minute off the boot of Manley. Like the point that you made, too, that usually when the ball is on the foot of Jorge that he's going to set something up. He had a lot of space to work with there. That seemed to predicate the whole sequence. Absolutely. You cannot give him space. You have to stay touch tight on, on Jorge Hernandez. He's that golden guy that you have to watch. The golden playmaker from last season led the league in assists, and he's already doing it again. I'm sure you would count that as his fourth assist, um, despite you know the, the acrobatics that 
Carter Manley had to put up there. But um, anytime he's involved, you can expect uh, a goal to follow shortly. Who had a opportunity streaking up the middle. Gomez trying to find his teammate, Hugo. So the pressure now firmly coming from San Antonio. Ball goes past the end line and another corner will be awarded for the home team. It's looking good for San Antonio. Corners uh, mean that they're putting the pressure where they need it to be, which is in the attacking third. But I wouldn't count Monterey Bay out just yet in their game against Rhode Island. They answered back every single time they were scored against to get the tie, the draw as a result. So we have to give it a couple more minutes here and just see what we're working with. Second goal of the season scored in the first 15 minutes for SAFC, but just the second goal that they have scored in the first half. And Coach Marcina, who you just saw, talked about resiliency for his team, really being a theme word for the games played thus far. And the resiliency he saw was patience last Saturday night, but also wanted to find his team to dip into that kind of killer instinct of putting a team away. Right. Stay relentless is what I would say to that, say to that because um, it's so easy. You get up two goals. It's the, the worst lead in soccer because they can come back uh, at any time. All they need is one, and then they get a rally, and then they get another, and before you know it, it's a draw, right? So lesson learned there early on, which is what you want, is to get all of those, you know, weird mental blocks out of the way. Uh, but looking pretty good here as long as they stick with it. Seven goals now on the season. Came in tied for first amongst all USL teams with six goals scored. So now to the message from Coach Marcina, as I'm sure reinforced throughout the week. Can there be more? Oh, absolutely. I think there's one thing, there's multiple things that Marcina is pretty good at. One of those being recruiting firepower up top deep in the left corner look alive to the attendant down there to jump off his seat <laughs> and just like that another corner as well um, you know speaking of firepower they had Santiago Patino he ended up leaving to Ho Chi Minh City for other opportunities there but ever since then they were trying to work out what, how are we going to handle things here in the offense? And I would just have to say that Hugo, Juan Agudelo, Jorge, Luke Hawkinson, Lucas have all done such a great job there in the attack. Whistle blown before the ball sent in. Mitch Tainer there, the object of Referee Lorenzo Hernandez's conversation. Whistle blows again, ready to go. That came off a corner kick sequence as this one long and trying to keep it alive. It's a good hustle there for Mitch Tainer, just shy of the chalk out there. Ball still in play. Yeah, we got two balls on the pitch. That's one way to slow down the play, I'll say that much. One way to increase the goal score. Yeah, <laughs> that too. Better chances, right? He's got a couple balls in the mix. So the Union will throw in. Or the Crispin Kelp, as you referred to. I like that that uh, name and the color scheme that they've got going on there. Of course, they're in all white kits today. Yeah. They were warming up in, in the kelp. Looked good. <laughs> Whistle blows. Grin to the whistle. What'd you see? We'll have a look back at it. Ball is in the air. A side cleat, no problem there. Looks like might have called a hand situation. I can't really tell on that one. That one must have been from the ref who was much closer there. Had a good look at it. Hugo Mubongo, who prefers to go by Hugo. We will address him moving forward. Number 18 in black. Little space to work for Monterey Bay. There's a clean look at the left frame. That ball deflected. 
out of bounds. No work for Sisniega in goal. And that's exactly what Alex Dixon does best. He's the guy who can get up, change speed very quickly. He handles business out there on the wing, and you can't give him a look at goal like that. Just a little bit too much time. They're lucky that ball just went shy of the post. It's number 15 in white. Keep an eye out when the ball is on his foot. Another corner. They will get set. Numbers up, building out of the back. Two on one, one man to beat. Clip down, no whistle. The ball will careen out of bounds and player down on the pitch. Does it look good? It had potential for San Antonio. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a card because, well, it looked like a clean tackle. It was all ball, but holding his shoulder there, Lucas. Of course, the physio staff out there to check on him right now, but oof. It looked like all ball to me. The stadium and the crowd might say something different. He was uh, in a scoring position, so looks like the ref is going to leave it as such. Not pulling out any yellow cards just yet. Yeah, we had highlighted Lucas, number 12. Currently lays on the pitch, getting attended to in our open. Talked about what he's meant to this team thus far. Right, and he's not the guy that you want down right now. He is so productive out there on the wing and in so many different ways. Like I said, he can score in the box, from outside of the box, and it's what he's doing off the ball, which is really important, too. He's kind of that spark, I would say, has shown up and keeps things going and moving. Leads the team with three shots on goal. Also those two goals, goals scored, excuse me. Has five shots, one Agudelo leads the team with six as Lucas still clutching that right shoulder. Marcina, of course, not happy. I was with you, I thought the, the tackle was clean. The defender was there before. Lucas, it was just bad contact that sent him to the ground and bad landing. Right. Him. We've all been there where it's eye on the ball. You're not seeing that guy come out of the blue with a solid defensive tackle. So good work there from Monterey Bay FC. Looks like he's going to try to go back in. Just had to come off the pitch for a little bit to see where he stands with that. In the meantime, the CFC will play down. Lucas awaits to check back in. So he will head out onto the pitch, so back to even numbers as Monterey Bay works down in the offensive third for them. This is a great work from Moby Fair, just stirring things up over there on the side. You can tell they love to get wide and pass in. There's Shannon Gomez just in time, bringing that national team quality out here to SAFC. Despite missing a game, still comes back and falls right into his starting spot. And, you know, Coach Marcina had said, not anyone just gets to come back and, and do that. They have to work for it. So he must have put in some next level work and training this week. Yeah, it feels like hearing from Coach Marcina, there's no player that's in the lineup in Penn much less permanent marker. It's all very fluid and you have to earn your spot. Even if you may have consistency in the lineup, it's due to consistency from those players that earn the right. Absolutely, anyone can be replaced at, at any time. And we see that season after season for every team, lots of turnover and changes. And so it keeps these guys playing at their best. Iron sharpens iron, so to speak. And um, and if I were a player, I'd want the same thing. I'd want to know someone's on my heels, so I'm playing my best ball too. Carter Manley, the goal scorer, getting his team organized for the throw-in. Okay, tell me about San Antonio's defense. How would you rate their defense thus far in the season? Oh, incredible. I mean, they, they've got between Manley, Kendall Burks, Mitch Tainer back there. They've done such a great job, and they can really ebb and, and flow from a three to a four to a five in the back, and I think it's that structure that makes them really tough to get, uh, just to break through, and they all know their individual jobs, and they've done them well so far. Your defense so collective, the effort, how you work 
together. They have allowed four goals, so a plus two goal differential from this albeit very young season. Cisniega has been a big part of that, the reigning USL keep of the week. I feel like four goals, I might be crucified for this, but I feel like four goals at the beginning of a season when you have a whole new center back, a whole new central midfield, I think isn't really too bad because, you know, your center backs, your outside backs, it's pretty much telepathic back there by the end of season. You can you can complete each other's sentences type stuff. And when it's early in the season, it's not quite there yet. So accidents happen. Yeah, I agree. I'll, I'll, I'll be your shield oh, okay. on that one. Another corner, though. Maria Bay has had their opportunities from the corner. That one could have been in the frame, but getting some help from his defense. Gomez, you mentioned, coming back in the starting lineup. A goal-saving defensive play. Oh, man. Shannon Gomez playing that post player the way that you want it to be done. So many times people will jump and then they'll, they'll miss the ball. <laughs> but he just stood his ground and headed it out of danger. This team will have to defend again. This one well up into the night sky, headed out of bounds will be a throw in for the Union. We were talking defense, you said excellent that was an excellent defensive play. It's just Diego will have to come out to punch that ball clear. This is Diego. Two big defensive plays, one by Gomez, one by the keep this Diego. We'll have to look at this. You can tell he's tallest guy on the team. That ball comes in. He stretches over the entire five-yard box to punch that one out. Good work there from him. Yeah, Not was, much you could do in that situation otherwise than punch it out. In that tough decision zone where does it come out? Does he let his defender handle it? Two on three break back the other way. That easily dealt with. Two players collide and the whistle will go in favor of the home team. Hawkinson in that scuffle. And now you've got Moby Fair trying to talk to the ref. Like, what happened? Let's go back to the save that we saw earlier. That's a tough one because your robes, your ribs, excuse me, are fully exposed in that moment. You're outstretched. He's got two guys under him. You know you're you're pretty good if you can jump over Mitch Tainer. The goal in the seventh from Manley. And a goal-saving play from Shannon Gomez a couple of minutes ago. As I said, a one-nothing advantage. For this San Antonio team that has been so good over the last two years here at Toyota Field. Fans always out, always supportive, always fired up and tailgating two, three hours before on the north side of the stadium. Beautiful night to take in this early season match of these two unbeaten teams tied atop the Western Conference, both with five points. San Antonio coming off their first win of this young season. But you look at those matches and Katie San Antonio could easily be undefeated for three wins. Right. Um, it's that 12th man that really comes into play. San Antonio FC has been undefeated for quite a bit of time here at Toyota Field. Only having one loss in 2023 here on their home field. So I think teams know by now it doesn't really matter who's out here. This crowd is going to uh, help these guys to a win or at least to a draw. 19-2, 15 over the last two regular seasons. 
here at home. Clean, clean tackle there by Kendall Burks. Physical tackle, too. That's the thing about him. Not only does he have that high IQ, but he's extremely physical. He has the stature. That's why he's in that center back role. One of the hardest positions in soccer. Got to have that really high IQ is that center back in the center mid position. Fair on the ground once again here. That's twice in the last handful of minutes that Moby Fair. 13 and white, you see getting attended to. Look back at this and oof, uh, hands up. It kind of looked like he may not have been paying attention. And chest bump. Right, sent a forehead right into Hugo's chest. Not exactly Zidane style from, what was it, the 2008 World Cup? That's a good, I yeah. think it was further back than that. <laughs> I, I lose uh, track now in my old age. Headbutt. But <laughs> yeah. The headbutt. Seen and heard around the world. Yeah, the heart-stopping headbutt. Hugo, though, the presence that we've seen so far up top, getting the start for San Antonio. We're going to go back to what you were talking about, the, the middle back and the lineup for San Antonio. Yes, Coach Marcina had a lot of confidence of what he can put in the middle defensively. Right, and I think that the most key player, of course, you want to score goals, but what is scoring goals if you're going to get a ton scored against, right? And so that center back spot is really, really extremely important. Crowd likes the opportunity. This ball served right into the box. Tapped around and the look on net for Juan Agudelo, but why? Oh, man. He got himself into a really good scoring position, but it was just handling that ball. Did a good job to, to settle it and bring it down. Just couldn't quite get the hips turned around the way he needed to to get it on frame. Mitch Tainer in there in the mix, turning that ball over. And then it comes over from Hugo. So he's there trying to control and contain. Oh, and it looks like the deflection is actually off of, I believe, Kai Green. Yeah, ricocheted off the hip of the defender. That's Grant Robinson, rather. Excuse me. Great defending there from Grant Robinson, just standing him up. The corner. Off the head, wide left. San Antonio just hammering it from the corners early on here. Yeah, we had seen last match, it was a season high. Working from the corner for San Antonio, they had nine opportunities. Had 18 shots, that was also a season high. Five shots on goal in their two goal scoring effort. One tally on the board so far. Carter Manley in the seventh. Came off a corner and ball that bounced around, kept alive, served in by Jorge, eventually finding the falling body of Manley. And that's all it takes, someone getting a foot on the end of it and into the goal, right? But man, that was a pretty one. Early last season, we saw a bicycle kick from, I believe it was Tani Oloshei. Great work there from him. But he's since gone on to play in the MLS. To the ground, poked forward, three on three as a couple defenders trying to get back. Hugo on the ground, easily. San Antonio just doing a great job of commanding the central midfield right now. They're picking up on passes. They're forcing turnovers into dangerous spots. And if you're Coach Marcina, you can be really proud of them right now. Siaha tested. It saves has allowed three goals prior to this match. Again. One of those guys battling out for his position there with Carlos Herrera. Herrera had quite a few starts last season. And then Siaha peppered it in too. And another collision. 
will see the yellow card. It was Hugo that was initiating Guzman, who is perplexed. <laughs> Let's look back at it. The ball's chipped up into the air. Hugo's holding things down. Oh, it's that high kick into Hugo's face. That'll do it for you every time. Charlie Guzman holding the shin. I'm sure he got a knock there as well, but that's not going to keep that yellow card from coming out of the ref's pocket. Yeah, it seemed like contact-wise it was equal between the two, but that boot going up high is... Hugo will say, hey, I, I didn't blow the whistle. Right, right. That could uh, break anyone's face if it, <laughs> if it makes contact with your face. So good call on the ref there to try and settle things down. Charlie, right, what does San Antonio do with this opportunity? Where do you expect this ball to go? I'm hoping it goes opposite upper 90 or potentially somewhere in the five in the mix. I'll have to look here, see what they go with. Hawkinson or Jorge. Jorge is really the, the, the key guy for services. So maybe if it's Hawkinson, he's taking it. Let's see. Hawkinson on the left. He will lay off. That ball right on net. Here the right post, Siaha having to dive to push it out. As he looks at his wall and that's where they're at. Not happy at all with that wall is Siaha, understandably so. Right through almost a meg, not quite. Whew. Forced him to put in some next level work to get there. It's hard as a keeper when you can't see that ball coming through traffic and you're able to react anyway. It's good stuff. Yeah, from that angle, shooting at that post, that ball got on there. Good pace. So good awareness by Anthony Siaha, who will have to stay alive. Another corner coming from San Antonio. And served close to the keeper in the dust uniform. Who helps punch it out past midfield. And back to his counterpart, Cisniega. Keeper's just playing catch, pass. <laughs> you have to settle it down, which is exactly what they're doing here. Trying to get something moving, possession. But SAFC just really not giving it to him. Yeah, a little bit too handsy there on his back. Good call there from the ref. It was pretty firm, the effort by Kendall Burks defensively. Good read, though, coming up and challenging that guy. That's exactly what uh, Monterey Bay wants. They want to pull the center backs out and uh, open up some pockets to run in onto. But SAFC, they've done such a great job of just getting back, getting numbers back quickly. And I think he was very well covered in that situation. Martinez took the free kick. Punches this one in. Cisniega comes out to help clear the threat momentarily. Ball circulated back towards the middle. Trying to play up. Good pass. Unable to do anything, but they did have some space. But just pressed a little too close to the end line. Corner kick to come. That's the shifty stuff that Coach Yallop was talking about, that diagonal run into space and then trying to make something with it. You know, if it's a corner, then so be it. Stays down in the attacking third, looking for the top portion of the frame. Martinez. I don't think that's a bad choice there from, from Walmer Martinez. I mean, you've seen it time and time again where they try to bring it back, recycle it, and it's just not aggressive enough there in the attack. So I think he was trying to break through that pattern um, that we've seen from them here in the first half quite a bit. Walmer actually was playing in that left back position for Grant Robinson when he's actually a right winger. So they've had, they've struggled a little bit with depth on their own as well, moving some guys around, playing in positions that they're not used to. Well, be yeah. fair, one of those as well. You like the, the idea spot there on the that. Mid, yeah. just, that's very hard to execute. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, if he continues with that mindset, it could, he could find the spot. Pace of the game has slowed down a little bit. Part has gotten more physical. Second yellow card. Of the game. 
Serve to Gomez, as you just heard from the PA announcer. So Gomez tagged for the foul, as we'll show you what happened. Look back here. And that is Shannon Gomez coming in hot. Trying to get that one. It was a little bit after the ball, so it does constitute a yellow. You know, Tyler, I think this might be one of those games where if you drink every time there's a foul, you end up feeling pretty good at the end of this game. I believe it is dollar beer night. Oh, here. Well, there you go. <laughs> $3, I think, hot dogs, $2 sodas, dollar beers. The unspoken game only the true fans know. That was a nice ball to find Hugo off the foot of Jorge. It'll bounce all the way out to midfield. We're into the 34th minute. What are your impressions coming into this, what you thought may happen, and what you're seeing thus far? Um, well, I think it's good that San Antonio got a goal early on because there haven't been too many really clean looks at the goal. I mean, they're getting into into the attacking third. They're doing some good things. I think it's a matter of time before we maybe see another one here from San Antonio. Monterey Bay bringing it to them. I think uh, they can also pat themselves on the back. Yeah, we haven't seen a ton of opportunities for San Antonio through the flow of the buildup. It's mainly come from pressure that's then led to corner kicks or free kicks to then attack the goal. I'd say San Antonio definitely dominated the first 15-ish minutes, and then Monterey Bay kind of woke up and said, this is not how this is going to go. Um, but they have got to play through the 45 and extra time here because they're a team, like I had mentioned before, they come back. They kind of claw their way back. Beautiful leave. Pushed down, but then instead of cutting back inside, it looked like he had some space. Tate Atkinson took it out right. And no angle. The defense was there. And Guzman. That was really good. I think that ball was fed in from Kevin Lambert, and then it was just that nice little click of the heel, Hawkinson. Maybe if you could have taken it one time, might have been a thing. We've seen him do it before. I would say things are heating up here for San Antonio. Yeah, they have earned multiple opportunities from the corner with their pressure. Keep this down. The attacking third, but squelched by the visitors. Tristan Traeger nice and feisty out there. He's done a pretty good job. But, that, you know, that's the thing. He's a guy who has two, two goals so far off the bench in three games. Sometimes that's your thing. You show up and you're a spark and you make it happen. You throw the defense off. You throw everyone off. It's different when you start the game, right? People begin to read you after a while. Two teams, every meeting has gotten progressively more competitive. First in the series, San Antonio won 6 0. With the last coming August of last year, 0 0 draw. That was the first ever points result for the Union. Seems to play again September 7th. Does it feel like that can be the same season? September, the season will still be going on. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a little bit cooler. I know things are cool right now, but the tough part is in the summer. Well, June, July, August. Oof. At Monterey Bay, so probably much cooler than it will be here. San Antonio is easily collected by Cisniega. Cisniega spent some time at Charlotte FC. Also LAFC played in Spain. Liga in Spain from Mexico City, Mexico, and Coach Marcina tends to say that I can't believe he's even playing in this league right now. How lucky are we to get a guy of that caliber right now to play for us? And you've seen it just making big saves time and time again. He has the stature, the mentality. He he punches it out when he has to, but he also has sticky gloves when he has to. Looks like that shoulder again. We we had talked Lucas at the top of the show and what he means to this team. It showed you earlier he was down on the pitch clutching at that right shoulder. Come out of the game for a moment. 
then went back in as we see what it is that took him to the pitch this time. You can see him right there in the middle of the screen, just waiting to see what happens. Let's see, he's, he's holding his shoulder. You know, shoulders are so tricky. Once you dislocate them or tweak them, you're, you're using it to run, you're using it to hold people off. It can so easily cause you tons and tons of problems, and that's what it looks like. I mean, look at how much lower his right shoulder is than is his left. He's holding it there. I don't want to speculate at all about what's happening, but, um, you know, if you're untouched by anyone out there on the field and you're, you're calling for a sub, that's, that can't be good. Yeah, and that sequence, too, is so scary. If, if a player, no one's around and just drops to the pitch immediately, your eyes will go there, but... When Lucas, I, in this instance, clutching the shoulder. Go ahead. I was going to say, when I played back in the day, many, many moons ago, I uh, had torn a muscle in my shoulder, and it's hard to even throw the ball in. I ended up having to have someone to throw the ball in. Holding people off is difficult, and that, that took me a whole season to recover from because if you don't rest it, it just doesn't get better. So let's hope it's nothing like that for him, and it's just something that a little bit of ice and stem can fix. But... Uh, Maybe they need that magic spray. We haven't seen any of the magic spray out here yet. Yeah, Lucas will sit down. Omar comes on. Maybe anticipated seeing him in the starting lineup. Right, some things kind of moved around when Shannon Gomez came back that pushed Luke Hawkinson in and Omar out. But now Omar is in, and as you can see there, Luke Hawkinson taking the spot there of, of Lucas. And again, just one of those utilitarian players is is Luke. He can do anything, anywhere. Dispute and trying to figure out who it was off. It was right in front of Coach Marcina, obviously insisting his team at it. Agudelo did as well, but the official ultimately makes the call, and the Union will throw it in, but not before order is restored. There's Manly that is changing I don't know that I would call this one a foul definitely a collision but to stop play could just be the ref trying to keep things simmered down so we will do it again from the same spot Carlos Guzman Diana right off the head of the recently inserted Omar. It's a great read there from Omar. Well, took someone's head off there in the stands, Shannon Gomez. Hopefully he wasn't bowling for dollar beers. <laughs> he could take out a whole tray. Oh, man. Not on a night like tonight with so many cards <laughs> being thrown around. One man in black down in the attacking third. He'll wait. The Calvary will give and go. It's a line of four defenders. Monterey Bay stops the push. We have another car coming out? Yeah, wow. I didn't see what it was. It's on the far side of the play. Maury Donor. Getting the yellow on that one. Really, the back line here for Monterey Bay FC has been so good. Grant Robinson, Charlie Guzman, Kai Green, Maury Doner, all there on the back line, doing great to drop. Not much you could do on a bicycle kick to stop that one. There's so much traffic happening, but all in all, do a great job. Charlie Guzman, great with his feet, feeding out, getting a lot of that play going. The CFC attempting some tiki taka successful so they start again so second yellow card of the match against the union one has been presented to san antonio trying to build some possession out there on the side but monterey bay fc just getting roots down too too soon got to keep that ball moving all around the pitch Headed right back to where it came from. Now Union with the ball in the box. Turn and shot. Why? 
close there for Monterey Bay. Got quite a bit of a heart rate going up and up and up if you are Cisniega. It's been a couple of close calls there. That was from Walmer Martinez. Saw him with a look earlier, but wanted to do it himself once again. And lead to a Corner for his team as we approach the 45th minute of the opening half. We saw San Antonio score in the seventh. This ball well up onto the concourse. Don't see a ton of balls get up there. No, if you take that, if you get that one up there, take it and run with it. So that's a keepsake <laughs> that uh, you may not get <laughs> to Head have every exit. now and then. Yeah, <laughs> that was from Rafael Baca too, uh, one of the big time leaders here on this Monterey Bay FC team has a goal has leads the team with 10 interceptions to the guy who kind of gets things moving for Monterey Bay it's kind of like they're the Jorge Hernandez of Monterey Bay FC involved in a lot there yeah Baca has been quiet in the USL week two player of the week that he has team of the week nominee as well we have something to do with Jorge Hernandez Nice turn from Tristan Traeger. Yep, space to operate. We talked about Traeger early on in the show. Is that off the crossbar? So San Antonio lucks out with some metal defense. One, two, many close calls there for San Antonio. Five minutes being added of stoppage time. Great service ball. Keeper just to beat. So down at one end, San Antonio saved by the crossbar. On the other side, Siaha beating. End of the ball with Juan attacking. Agudelo could not get there. It's a great ball to find the foot of Agudelo. It's a couple times now we've seen some breakaway attempts from SAFC, even getting numbers up, but. It's what do you do with the ball when you have all that time? I think they're, they're struggling to put that piece together. So San Antonio is up 1-0, but this game could easily be 2-1. If you didn't have Gomez that defensed at his post, keep the ball out earlier, and then that ball we just saw off the crossbar. Right, a bit of an angel on the goalposts, I like to say, because if it weren't there, it would be a very different result. Crisp and Kelp have had their opportunities here in the opening half. He still has a decent chunk of time. Into the gloves of Cisniega. Some good sticky gloves there from him, and that's exactly what I was talking about. He punches it out when he has to. He collects when it's wise and it makes sense, and it's just a high-caliber player out there in the box. You know, if you had to compare these two teams, I... It, it's not really, aside from the goal right now, it's pretty even Stevens out here between possession. Um, maybe there's some corner kicks that might show a difference. It'll be interesting to see the final stats are here at the end of the half. It was a nifty play, that back heel. Nearly led to the opportunity, but Union building. There's a whistle. And I believe Lorenzo Hernandez. Reaching for the pocket. Did he? I don't think so. Maybe he thought about it. He was bluffing me. <laughs> Just trying to keep us all on the edge of our seat. So if you're watching, you can count that as a drink. We'll give you that one. You talked first 15 minutes. It was really San Antonio dictating the action. Then it kind of devolved in that middle portion to a back and forth, a couple opportunities for San Antonio. But the last 10 to 15 has been all Monterey Bay in terms of pressure. Right, they're trying to equalize before they go into the half. I'm sure they've got plenty of minutes, plus five, to work with here. Two great opportunities, and there they finally get one. The pressure has come, and that ball served in. Moby Fair puts it in the net, and we are tied at one all. First goal of the season there for Moby Fair, and timing was of the essence, of course. They're that team, they're going to claw back. He's got extra time going, everything on the line. He's there, and he just gets on the end of it. He gets loose. You just have to keep that man mark really tight on those services in. You can't take your foot off the gas. Moby Fair definitely didn't finish the job there. Tainer there defensively just passed his outstretched boot, and 
Nice job by Fair to find net and to equalize this game. And in terms of effort, that, that is a well-earned, much-deserved goal for Monterey Bay as they have been at the attack for these last 10 minutes and finally capitalized something to show for it. Right, beyond well-deserved for them. And they continue to push forward. Seconds counting down. What's happened for San Antonio? What's been the difference over this last 10, 15 minutes? Um, I think they had a couple of opportunities that didn't go their way, and sometimes that'll take the wind right out of your sails when things like that happen. So it's really important that next time they get a breakaway or make something happen, uh, that they finish the job. That's what Coach Marcina talked about in terms of the relentlessness, the resiliency of his team. Could they keep their foot on the gas and put a team away when given the opportunity? They have allowed the goal. In this extra time is ball chipped. Another close call. Another close call right there. And, um, you know, goals change games. So I think you can expect SAFC to finish strong here and then to come out strong, too, in the second half. But you have to hand it to him. I mean, last matchup was a 0-0 draw. At least there's a, a goal on the score sheet here for Monterey Bay FC. Feels like a different team. So the whistle will blow. It was a goal in the seventh minute for Manly. And then the visitors, Monterey Bay, the union strike in extra time, stoppage time of the first half after a bevy of minutes of pressure. Ties it up at one apiece since both teams will head to their respective locker rooms and gather themselves. But this is a great one. Two unbeaten teams on this young season. Both seeking their second win. 1-1 one, one as we hit the lockers. Come back in a moment to break it down. Take a good look around. And if you're looking down, put a little love in your heart. Kindness will be your guide. Put a little love in your heart. Wherever or whenever you're in need, the Right Heart Specialist is within reach with our extensive cardiovascular network. Learn more now about our comprehensive heart care. Three nuns were driving through Austin and they got a flat tire. They stop in front of a frost bank. Next thing you know, a frost banker walks out and changes their tire? Hold on, hold on. This can't be real. It's a real story. And the nuns? Yeah, they weren't even frost customers. Dude! You think I can be a nun? Not a chance, sister. The Cantina Chicken Crispy Taco isn't just a late night taco, it's a seasoned and slow roasted chicken taco that pairs nicely with the new avocado verde salsa at any time. Introducing the new Cantina Chicken Crispy Taco, only at Taco Bell. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Woo! I love it. Woo! Whoa. Oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> what do we see? Winners. I love you. Right now, qualified lessees can lease a stylish new 2024 Toyota Camry LE for $259 a month. Offer ends April 1st. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. One one contest here at Toyota Field. These two unbeaten teams, Monterey Bay FC, San Antonio FC. Hope you cut your breath on that one. Yeah. Wow, it really turned up in that last 15 minutes. Tyler Denny, Katie Goodman, what were your impressions of that first half? Oh man, well Carter Manley coming out hot, right with the nice uh 
a bicycle kick so good from him there. I mean, without him, this would be a 1-0 result. And uh, it's the acrobatics for me, of course, comes from uh, Jorge Hernandez. He gets the offshoot there and finishes it there in the side. Yeah, and that was pressure that we saw it was Gomez inserted into the starting lineup coming back from duty that saved one goal, Cisniega, with one that was punched out. This was another shot on goal. This one off the free kick, good save on the other side. San Antonio was saved by the crossbar, but then after the pressure finally breaking through to Monterey Bay, getting their goal from Fair. Right, a well-deserved goal there from Moby Fair. Um, they've done such a great job. I think that first 15 minutes could have gone to SAFC. Uh, if I were them, I would have wanted to put a second away just to put that nail in the coffin. I'm sure Coach Marcino would have too, but... I mean, Monterey Bay FC, they kept fighting back, fighting back. It almost felt like it was a matter of time. You saw the missed shots. You saw the balls hitting the crossbar. It's Shannon Gomez having to do what they do best over there at the post when you're the, the shorter defender, and he did a good job there. But now it's anyone's game. We're back to that 1-1 draw here and got another 45 minutes, probably plus some, seeing uh, how a lot of these fouls are going uh, to get a result. Yeah, Monterey Bay has never come in here and emerged with a victory. Their last meeting here was a 0-0 draw. But this is a team very much looking up to the task, and they were dictating the pace. We talked about for San Antonio that Lucas would be the dictator. What have you seen from him in the first half? Great stuff from him. It's unfortunate that he hurt his shoulder, that he's probably not going to be in this second half. And uh, we'll have a look back here at this injury it's a bit of a collision he falls and it looks like the fall is what did it for him he gets back up he tries to push through it but as you see there in the middle of your screen ends up coming down collapsing to the field just can't push through it a lot of people think oh you're playing soccer with your feet but your shoulders your arms are so so important and uh so best of luck to him they're gonna have uh, some work to put in there you've got luke hawkinson taking his place you've got um uh, omar there in the middle trying to do hawkinson's job and that's just the way it is early on in season when you're still trying to solidify your roster. You kind of got to move guys around a little bit to uh, get the result. Take me into the San Antonio locker room. What do you think the conversation is? Coach Marcina was employing to his team wants to see in the second half probably take a couple deep breaths when you get those breakaways there at the attacking third they've done a great job getting away getting out of pressure i think they could do a little bit better getting into scoring position getting a little more creative sometimes that means uh bent runs uh pulling defenders out uh, maybe a, a driven vertical ball in uh, right now they're just kind of trying to get on the end of it and you can see that they're trying to make something happen they just haven't quite got that queer look clear look at it um but uh, i think it's going to come the chips will fall and that's that that's what early season play is for yeah it's been an exciting first half one one deservedly so back and forth this battle of unbeaten second half we come back Still get it done. <laughs> When termites show up, so do we. Terminix it. You've given us a foundation to be proud of. We build on this now. This is it now, gents. This is us from now on. going to be professional athletes but if your goal is to finish your degree we can help come to a university that puts your goals first Bellevue University your partner in finishing goals Great. Oh. When 
termites show up? So do we. Terminix it. A good punch, counter punch match here at Toyota Field in San Antonio, Texas. A beautiful spring evening. And it has us at a 1 1 tie with both teams in the locker room. Show you some stats from the first half. What stood out to you, Katie? Right. Well, I would say those corners initially, but it's all tied up here. Corners, of course, SAFC walking walking away with a couple more fouls here. Eight to Monterey Bay FC's three fouls. Uh, but again, this is kind of what I expected. Similar possession numbers, similar corners, and then the results are the same. One and one on the goal as a result of that. Yeah, six shots for San Antonio FC, but... Those don't seem to have come through the flow of the offense, whereas Monterey Bay FC really, especially in those last 10, 15 minutes, got it through the flow of their offense with their pressure. Right, and I think sometimes that comes with time, right, where these teams begin to pick up on, you know, weak spots that they can kind of uh, take advantage of. And so I think we saw a little bit of that there with Monterey Bay FC in the end. So that's your breakdown for the first half, 1-1. One, one. Come back for the second here in a moment. fire san antonio you're invited to sing a song all night long for the first time ever lionel richie and earth wind and fire together in one magical night you don't want to miss frost bank center june 4th get tickets now at ticketmaster.com what would you do if you won a big jackpot buy a new car Take a vacation. Pay off your house. Turn your dreams into reality at Texas' premier entertainment destination. Kickapoo Lucky Eagle Casino Hotel in Eagle Pass, Texas. At HEB, we're proud to offer over 6,000 products grown, harvested, or made by our fellow Texans. I saw miles and miles of Texas, all the stars up in the sky. I saw miles and It's all part of our commitment to preserving the future of Texas and supporting our Texas neighbors. Learn more about our sustainability efforts at OurTexasOurFuture.com. Sarah needed a financial institution that believes in the people they serve. She wanted to be part of a community of savers and borrowers built from a concern for one another, not shareholders. A credit union that offers sensible tools that put people in control of their financial health. So Sarah joined Credit Human, a financial partner for all of her ups and downs, wins and losses, work days, weekends, and game nights. Go Sarah, go. Credit Human, a federal credit union. Teams warming up, getting ready for the second half, this 1-1 contest thus far. Big news in the SAFC universe. Mohamed Abu earlier this week announcing his retirement, a legend part of that 2022 championship team. Such a legend indeed. I mean, I, I'll never forget that Colorado Springs switchbacks game where he scored with off a header, one of his few goals, and he just said, I never score with my head, and it was amazing, and he loved it. He led the team with 56 chances created in the 2022 season he plays for the Ghanaian national team actually went to the World Cup qualifiers with them there has had spent time with La Liga in Spain uh, played for DC United as well in the MLS and uh, just that all-around great player that can fill the spaces and do what you need him to do so ending on a high note is Mohamed Abu yeah the Ghanaian national got to play for his home country in some World Cup qualifiers also the African Nations Cup but will be remembered as such a legend here part of that championship team this SAFC team though they got to find a little fight for the second half the good news Katie they have been a second half team this year right they can at least pride themselves on that but do you want to be a second half team no but you know it is what it is right now we're in the second half things are all tied up and they have got to make things happen they've got to be cleaner in that attack and they've got to finish the job yeah, you do not want to miss the second half, these two unbeaten teams. You see the six goals, we showed you that. The conversion rate is the USL, but their goals, they come in the second half of play. Can they find that in order to find a win? Come on back and find out.
can tell me what they want to be when they grow up. Rico? Are you seriously going to have nachos for all? Hi, sports fans. I'm Jeff Davis. Going head-to-head -head with insurance companies is no easy game. It requires determination, gamesmanship, and grit. That's why you need Davis Law Firm on your side. With over 25 years' experience, our team of around 150 in seven Texas cities has a winning track record of verdicts and settlements, many in the millions of dollars. And just like your favorite team, we play to win. If you're hurt in a car, truck, or commercial vehicle accident, call us at 444-4444. So if you want more, call the fours. Order Pizza Hut now and get a free large pizza later. That's a free pizza on your next order. So you can pizza now, then pizza again. Free pizza means your next dinner is covered. Your future self will thank you. Get it while it's hot. Only at Pizza Hut. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Yeah. Sick. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Right now, qualified buyers get 0% APR financing for 36 months on a rugged new 2024 Tundra. Offer ends April 1st. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Teams on the pitch, ready to go in this 1-1 contest between Monterey Bay FC, San Antonio FC. Two teams tied atop the Western Conference table in this young USL season, fourth match of the season for both of these teams. Still playing at a once a week clip. San Antonio was last in action last Saturday. It was a 2-0 victory, first win on the young season for the home squad. But very much in a match now after scoring early. Just their second first half goal of the year, struck in the seventh minute, Manly. But what do these teams have for a second half? You know, one thing I can say is that both teams are running very complimentary lineups. The uh, SAFC with a 5-3-2, Monterey Bay with a 4-3-3. San Antonio off the jump and run down the middle. I was going to say that because of that, you see a lot of uh, attacking potential on both sides here. So not... Not shocked that there's some breakthroughs for both SCFC and Monterey Bay. Last week you had, you had stressed for San Antonio. You saw in the first half attacking from the wings and you wanted more emphasis on the middle. What did you see attacking-wise for San Antonio in that first half and does anything need to change? Um, no. I mean, I think SCFC is playing the way that they play. They're maintaining possession. It's just that attacking third, finding the spots but they need to find them. Ooh, almost there if it weren't for Kendall Burks to making that step that very easily could have been a look at the goal there for Monterey Bay FC. No one off the bench yet for the visitors for San Antonio. They've had to pull Omar off with that injury to Lucas. Showed you earlier, had tweaked the right shoulder, went down, came back on, played for about 20 minutes for falling to the pitch and going off on his own accord. Kitty, we've talked so much, and you can't talk SAFC without the home field advantage. But it feels like the crowd's been quiet tonight. This team trying to find a way to get that crowd back into it. Right. Well, I think that sometimes happens when you've got a whole new roster you're still trying to get to know some of these guys and I think the more great save there from Sisnier you know on that topic everyone knows Sisnier he's made some so many great saves out here but I think the longer season goes uh, goes by and the more fans kind of pepper in and out uh, the more that they'll start to build a bond with these players out there on the field because uh, the fans they really and truly are the 12th man uh, they really help when, when you need them most. We saw that in the playoff setting multiple times, back-to-back -back years, um, just making things difficult for both teams. Feels like, too, this opening five, ten minutes, important for San Antonio to try to 
send a message, try to corral some of that momentum back in this match. Right. Uh, something that they really need from the fans right now as we speak because things are just moving a little slow there from, for them here. Omar, the recipient, the pass from Hugo. Fans thought corner they had a better angle than we did as Omar will trot back. Have another look at that, and ooh, yeah, lots of chippiness there. Omar's trying to make his way through. Ref says play on. It's more Donner, the defender in number three. White for Monterey Bay. Game's been physical, but it hasn't been physical across the line to trend towards sloppy, a lot of tackling. Not not as much as we saw last week. They really had a lot of whistle. It's been a, a good balance. Right. I mean, yes, there's been your yellows. There's been some fouls, but all in all, really pretty good out here. Clean, classy for the most part. Granted, San Antonio does have some history with Colorado Springs that you referenced. It's always quite the physical match when those two play. That it is. But still very much in the infancy of the series against the Union. They are one of nine active USL championship clubs that SAFC is unbeaten against. Three wins, the lone draw. The draw. Coming in the last meeting for these two teams, albeit last season. Clear down on the pitch, whistle blown, but that'll be not to the contact that took down the San Antonio player. It's Jorge, the body on the pitch for San Antonio, but the whistle in favor of Monterey Bay. You know, a lot of people talk about, you know, when you go to play against a team, they're the team that's circled on the sheet. Well, I think Jorge Hernandez is the guy whose Ooh. name is circled on the sheet as well. As you can see there, everyone is playing their best ball against him. Sometimes that means some really aggressive physical behavior to try to slow him down. Well, there was just the turf monster that got him. It looked like that right boot caught up. Grant Robinson calling for it out there in that outside back position. He got nice and wide. Didn't necessarily have to send that ball up, but still they're trying to do something with it here. The timeliness of the Union defense as well. Every time that it seems San Antonio has the ball on their foot with a little space. There's a defender right there. Cisniega's right there. The possession favoring the Union so far. Three on four break. Up to Hugo. Hugo trying to step around the defender for too much sauce on that ball out of bounds. Yeah, I mean, not the first time that we've seen a breakaway and some development happen. I mean, you can hear it in the crowd. They're excited. Sometimes your first thought is, hey, run directly to goal and try to get on the end of something but also a check back to the top of the 18 might not be a bad idea or look for the late runner. There's just a little bit of disconnect and I think that's kind of the situation here is everyone is full steam ahead when they get into the box, but who is there to pick up the scraps and sometimes that's where the goals happen. Good working out of that corner there, yeah. Carter Manley. Heavy pressure. Yeah. How much we need to work with. Well, I think that's something Monterey Bay FC has done so well. They all move over to one side as a really compact unit. It's just hard to break them down through the middle. SCFC was doing a lot of that early on. I think that's why they had so much success. They were forcing turnovers. They were winning the ball, dominating possession. Ever since then, uh, Monterey Bay has just got a little more compact there in the center. Dixon. 
Blackwell long on that service ball. Dixon from Bay City, Texas, into North Carolina. Whistle on the fight for space. Agudelo will be the offender. Agudelo, a familiar name even before his appearance here with SAFC, played for the Birmingham Legion, was definitely a thorn in the side of Alan Marcina. That ball just past the arm of Cisniega, but just wide. It was close on the defense and nearly skirting through for the Union. Oh, man. It just simply has to be better at the end of that day. Um, I mean, great high press. You see that it's working there for Luther Archimede. He's that guy. If he can get the scoring going and moving, it's just going to be like a dam of water opened up there. He caused a lot of problems for SAFC last season from SAC Republic. Luther Archimed, the thorn in the side, and a spark off the bench for Sacramento last year in the playoffs came in in the 58th minute, but Coach Alan Marcina for San Antonio saying he was pivotal in that 3-1 Sacramento win that ended the season for San Antonio in their fourth consecutive playoff appearance. Ended their quest to go back-to-back. Soccer is a mental game like that. You know, you just, it's typically not a high scoring game. I mean, you get lucky every now and then you might see a game with, with five or six play, uh, five or six goals, but it's not so often. So sometimes if a player goes a couple games without a goal, then that can make things pretty difficult. The sense of urgency right now, does it feel like the Union have a little bit more? Yeah, and I think they may feel like they have more to play for. Last time we saw them was later in the season. Um, it was late August. They're still vying for, you know, a playoff spot, but they were pretty pretty close there. In this case, it's brand new. They want to take down this opponent because it's the best chance that they've got here to to get one on them, a whole new roster, everything. So you can bet your bottom dollar they are playing with everything that they have right now. SAFC, they've got to wake up. they got to bring some pace. Not a bad ball in. Hey, off the head. But, Katie, to the point you were making earlier about five minutes ago, that patience of, of trying to recycle the ball, trying to move it back rather than just press to the middle of the goal. We saw a little bit more in that sequence. Right. Um, yeah, I think... They had a few numbers up as well that helped that. They're still working to keep that center of the field connected. You can see Omar sitting back trying to mark Tristan Traeger. So that pulls him a little bit out of the attack. He has to keep that more of a defensive mindset. And so a, a lot of uh, mental chess being played here from either side from both coaching staffs. Let's see if this little... One minute run, Sparks, San Antonio, nifty ball work, fighting through a trio of defenders. That ball chipped over. It was Jorge trying to get a clean look on goal after the hard work from Agudelo. Just too much traffic there in that situation. And um, if you're there, you maybe want to flick it on with a header. You don't want to hold on to that ball too much, but he was just doing the best that he could, I think, with what he had received. <laughs> Ref says he wants that ball from the box. <laughs> Slowly inching back. Made all the difference. Muhammad Omar there with a great win out of the air. Such a quality player there on that front. Losing the footing. Can San Antonio capitalize here? Couple numbers. Good defensive play. It was Hugo awaiting 
but chipped out of bounds. The back line, Kai Green. Kai, Quick back in. Kai's just that guy that does it for Coach Yallop day in and day out. Good find by Hugo. But even then, I was watching that development, that attack in on that last play, and you've got to get the midfield connected, especially the defensive midfield. That's where the drop shot will come from. Just a little bit more on that ball. Could have had wide open opportunity, but Siaha. For me, it was a confidence from Charlie Guzman chesting that one back. Having the confidence to redirect it with pace, knowing it'll go into his hands. It takes a special amount of audacity to pull that off. He did it. Seen a little more patience from San Antonio, too, when their offensive players are receiving the ball, taking a moment to maybe assess, feels like, the space that they're in and then make their decision. Right, and that's exactly what Coach Marcino wants. He wants that patience, find the seams, and expose some people. Substitution coming. Michael Gonzalez will be the player coming on for Tristan Traeger. Traeger, the leading goal scorer for the Union of Monterey Bay. So Gonzalez on, Traeger off, fresh legs. Unfortunate there that Traeger couldn't get the goal. I mean, he was close. He was mixing things up quite a bit, but substitutions, timely substitutions. Change games. It's a good corner service ball, but just too much heat on. Well over and into the fans. Frustration, I think deservedly so. Shannon Gomez thought he had made the defensive play and then fighting through to try to get the ball as the late whistle halts play. Yeah, that was just, that was nothing there. And frustrated, understandably so. Just a little bit of a body check, which looks more like a momentum situation there. Through the opening 15 minutes of the second half. Neither team willing to seed an inch, it feels like. Either of these teams walks out of here with a win, I feel like it's going to be pretty impressive. Yeah. Seconds ticking down. Getting into that territory, the around the 70-minute mark is when SAFC really starts heating up. So, let's see what they can do with this. Seven goals on the season. Just two of them have come in the first half. It's definitely a second-half team. Interested though with having to go to the bench for Lucas and the Omar substitution via the injury as Omar receives the ball in some space. That was a good look there from Omar. Just tough to handle. He could have wide. Jorge working. Nobody there. Right onto the defense. Bouncing around and we'll end up back to Cisniega. Crowd wanted a handball on that one. Not going to get it. Manley, the goal scorer, came on a bicycle in the seventh. After a corner kick in service from Jorge. But the cleaner looks on the night have definitely been in favor of the Union. Can San Antonio? Get something here, space to work. That clip. Looks like that ball went just outside the end line there. So we call it a goal kick. Shannon Gomez working back into the starting lineup. Said his name quite a bit tonight. Had a goal saving play. This could be. 3-1 right now for Monterey Bay. Easily. And Shannon is just one of those players. He has an engine that doesn't stop. It doesn't matter if he's been 
halfway across the world <laughs> playing uh, for his national team or if he's back here, he's going to bring his best every single time. And that's what it's required in order to make it into the starting lineup here with SAFC. Just a nitty-gritty team. That culture does not change from previous seasons. You might see different names, but that stingy, collective, compact, defensive-minded team will always be there. Tainer with his second throw-in. Marcino will get his squad together and Compose their formation. Lambert doing a good job to read that and to try to force that ball. You have Jorge squeezing by, trying to keep them wide. I think a lot of their luck has come from finding the seams in the middle. Now what is Agudelo going to do with it here? Going to wait for Jorge. Jorge tap just past his own boot. A bit too much of a Tough first touch, could have mainly making the best of that one. Yeah, Was it good too short? Good recovery by Manley. <laughs> Make sure you beat the Union attacker. San Antonio Proby. They earn a corner. Corey Donor really handling that right side of the pitch there for Monterey Bay FC been a couple of times that SAFC has been denied because of him picking up on that. Jorge ready. Got a guy in Mormitz there talking to Jorge. Give him a nice little tap on the chest. The head is cleared. Defender was hugging the post. Might work for the defender, but it's an opportunity for San Antonio as they keep up their pressure. To the foot of Omar. Here we go, Hugo. Can't let your opponent out of the corner like that, but it's Kai Green with some next level defense there. He's just really shut down. Or hey, pass the attack. defender. Try to make another miss, does to put the ball in, but no teammate there to receive. But to the other side and out. It's a good clearance. When in doubt, clear it out. San Antonio has found a more urgency pace for the last five minutes is Monterey Bay is going to empty the bench. It's quite a big substitution happening here for Monterey Bay. You can't help but wonder how Marcita might respond to this. Subs change games, goals change games. Goal scorer Moby Fair will sit down. Brian Dieter. One of the trio coming on. So the sub compliment now on the pitch for the visiting Monterey Bay FC Union. Fresh bodies for the Crisp and Kelp. Hugo, one-on-one. -on -one. There's one of the handball there. Hugo fighting through, taken down in the box. But to no whistle. Seemed like a pull from behind, at least. No contact to warrant. And Antonio will have to regather. What'd you see? You think yeah. whistle? <laughs> um, it's hard to say on that one. It kind of looked like all ball. Looked like maybe a smidge of a, 
of trying to sell it a little bit, but uh, all in all, we've got a refuse suck going on yeah. out here <laughs> in the crowd, and so uh, I, uh, I think it could have been, it could have gone anyway. If it were me, I probably would have called that one. You see the, the foul box. differential right now, 16 called against San Antonio to the three. May not be, uh, sounds like San Antonio may not be too happy with that ref, understandably so. Things are going to get a little more heated. Yeah. Captain Mitch Tainer. Mitch Tainer out there and maybe a little frustrated with the way that the whistle's been going. To show you the play earlier, that drew the ire of the crowd. This was you go working in, and yeah, one would think that left oh. arm. I recount what I said because <laughs> that was a tackle from behind in the box. Slap on the wrist there for the ref. Definitely should have been a PK. So Hugo will sit down. Lacey will be the substitution. And it sounds as if Alan Marcina, the recipient of a yellow card. So emotions now running hot for San Antonio. They've seen the whistle go against them or not for them. A couple instances. It's a good hustle there from Cameron Lacey, and not surprised on the yellow from Marcina. Game's a bit out of hand. So can they tap into this growing pressure? It was a good left foot by Jorge. I think he might have taken that with the outside of the boot, was trying to get a bend on it. That's some next level stuff there. Things really heating up here for SAFC. I don't think they were happy about that last call. Here to make it known. Some good challenges there from Kevin Lambert. The feeling of this game is 1-1. But right now, it feels as if San Antonio is down. It does. And they're starting to play like it, as they should, if they really want to walk away with the result. Frank Yallop looks on as... This team has never defeated. This franchise has never defeated. San Antonio. Drawn here. No victories across their four tries thus far. Good strip defensively. San Antonio, though, has found your urgency. Sent a couple balls on keep. Nothing supremely threatening outside of the one that was saved at the post off the corner. Right, and essentially you want to try to be maybe a little more patient here. Try to bait them a little bit, find more seams. As you can see, there's so many white jerseys there that it's forcing SAFC to go flank to flank to flank. Atkinson will... Draw two, and Jorge, who's been all over, falls down there. This ball will get a shot. And the keeper was there to boot it out of bounds. That was the best development I've seen from San Antonio FC, and it's Jorge getting in the mix, opening up Hawkinson. He sends it through. What a ball. Cameron Lacey is there. It's just a better save from Anthony Siaha. So Cameron Lacey, who came off the bench just a couple of minutes ago. An opportunity is another corner kick dealt with by the defense of the Union. This one does stay. Turning around, shooting. Had a look. Couldn't get enough turn to put it on frame. Not a bad go at it, Kendall Burks. Burks will drop back into his defensive position. Pretty dead. San Antonio has won the possession battle in this second half. There's, there's about a 6% difference in the first half, but these numbers getting closer to even 
it's winning those 50-50 balls there, though. They just you have to dominate there in the center of the field. If it's anyone's ball, it has to be your ball. So continue to hustle. And it's this Monterey Bay defense, I think that is really setting the tone for the rest of the field. Tainer turns his body around and able to clip that ball down. It's a good check in from Agudelo. Gives space for people to run in behind. Tainer Bit of a miscommunication the there. Pass. So the defense will pack it in. Now I think the question for Monterey Bay, how aggressive do you want to be right now at 1-1? Knowing how hard it is to walk out of here, what is that line between aggression to trying to get a win versus making sure you walk out with some points? Well, I think the four in the back, you can really rely on there for Monterey Bay. I think hats off to that back line. They've done such a great job of reading the play, even Sneaking up, shutting down the midfield, too. Gomez tried to work through the two defenders with just too much on the dribble. Loses the handle. And then we'll gather, serve in. Got a chance diving with the head, but Manley was there defensively to deal with the threat from the sub, Dieter. Not a bad service in. It feels composed and relaxed there for Monterey Bay FC. You know, I think you get so excited sometimes you're in the attacking third. You've got to find the goal that's going to tip the scales when really that's when you need to be taking a couple extra breaths, slowing it down sometimes, looking for a unique option. Guys, leg swings, leg swings, leg swings. In Into the 75th. Half an hour played in this second half. I know early in the season, this just the fourth match for both of these teams, but Katie, this has been a high-level played match. It feels like two very well-constructed teams that are working together. It hasn't been overly physical, overly sloppy. Some good chances, good goalkeeping. It's high quality. Right, and I think you get a lot of that when you have complementary lineups. As mentioned, the 5-3-2 and a 4-3-3. You're going to expose those formations uh, no matter what. But uh, both teams just doing a great job defensively, I think, to keep things really going back and forth. Omar in with the hard challenge. Holding his chest. We'll have to look back at this. Oh, yeah. Runs right into <laughs> the shin there of Dieter. The ref's going to come check on him. Lorenzo Hernandez will check to make sure he's all right. And after he does, he will present him a yellow card to which Omar stood up and was very puzzled as to the result of the interaction that drew him the yellow card. Yeah, I don't think that should have been a yellow. He was going for the ball, ran into his leg. Uh, didn't seem overly aggressive. Whistle very much. And on San Antonio thus far. You can watch the match as well. It's <laughs> a nice showing there for Michael Gonzalez. Some good footwork. And himself a corner. Corners in favor of San Antonio, eight to seven. But both teams have had good opportunities. As the Union have here on the ricochet. Shannon Gomez there once again ends up being the guy deflecting that ball out of play. And it's Monterey Bay's defense. They're camped out outside this 18 circle, trying to have a go at it. Just trying to find that little bit of space or just put it in and 
ball do what it does. Easy defense on that service ball. It's a nice layoff there in the corner. What the Union do with it? Ball that trickles out of bounds, but it will end with a Cisniega pass out. I'd say Monterey Bay just a little bit more dominant on the right flank versus the left, maybe due to some substitutions. Just players working better together, moving up that right side. FCFC just still trying to maintain that possession, get that ball settled. Looks like they've done it. Now where do they go? Cycling the ball back to the middle. Back to the middle of the pitch. Gomez will work. Gomez, the long pass. Ton of jerseys there in white. Easy work defensively. San Antonio will have to rebuild from the back. Usually when you have some more wide open seams when you're coming from the back, that's when you want your center strikers to check. It's almost a complete pass there. It would have really worked there for SAFC. But here it's a little bit stagnant. You've got Jorge moving into Omar, but then it gets congested. You see that back, there's four holding steady, kind of one roving, and then another three that are chasing the ball. It's very little space to work with is just too much to try to find Gomez throwing coming for the Union. That's a good idea. Just had a little bit too much pace on it, but the idea of flicking it on is it's not a bad idea. I think a lot of that comes with just having time to play together and, and read stuff like that. didn't like the contact. Agudelo pushed down. It was like a, a nice piece of defense from Tana earlier. Right. It looked like a little bit more of a trip to me. To say Agudelo wasn't too mad about it. We talked about Union building from this right side. Gomez, the defender, forced the ball back to the middle of the shot. Crossbar. Substitutions have been really productive so far. Michael Gonzalez clearly loves taking the ball at his feet 1v1, and he's done a good job beating between Shannon or Tainer a couple of times, beating those guys there. It's hard, hard players to beat. And then Pierce Galloway with the shot there. We've seen Ryan Dieter already in the mix quite a bit. So some nice, timely subbing there from Coach Yallop. Jersey tug out. of the jersey yeah. by Lambert gets away with it. Late call. Another yellow card. Is that to Lambert? That yeah. is yep. <laughs> a very late <laughs> call. Maybe one of his uh, sideline refs sig signaled that. Center rep was maybe out of proper viewing position. He was trying to get back. Look at this. He gets beat. <laughs> a little bit of a hold. You yeah, can't do it. A parachute jersey there yeah, for Michael yeah. Gonzalez. I'm not trying to say that he was right in doing that, but you know, if it's a foul, call it. Blow the whistle. Now we're adjudicating and another yellow. Now you've really it, it's you, you've Brought out the Oprah. Yeah, this truly is an Oprah Winfrey production. I hope you've all enjoyed getting all these free yellows. <laughs> um, yeah, they're going to have to watch out because if Dude. anyone gets another yellow that is more warranted. Oh, Baca. With the, if you get a double yellow, you're out. You know, so we still got some time to play here. It's a Dune card. 
<laughs> Dune card. Dune, Dune, Dune yellow, the, as they the say. The yellow for the crisp and kelp. It's their other third color that their keeper right now is donned in. Siaha, Siaha's proved adequate to the part, even yeah. more so tonight. He's been in on a couple saves. He's been definitely working his defense and trying to keep them in the proper positions. I'd say when duty has called, he's shown up and he's done a great job. He's always been in the right position. Yeah, the goal from Manley really wasn't on Siaha. That was not much you can do with that. Defense got to help you out there. Good give and go. Trying to find the look on frame. Crossed over. Bounces back out to Gomez, who will reset. Would have loved to see Jorge Hernandez take that one. Turn on a dime there is Hernandez. They will now have to just throw it in. will earn a whistle as deep now in the attacking third San Antonio will have an opportunity as Hernandez is helped up by Baca all smiles is good Baca has been pretty chippy there with Jorge so always good when you can lend a helping hand to let him up okay so what do you expect to see here I'm going to bet he goes backside on this, but we'll have to see. He's going to have to wait for a little bit. Dixon was the causer of the stoppage. Will now come off Alejandro Lara. Not sure how many more players are left on the bench for Monterey Bay. Maybe one or two more, but here comes now the opportunity for Jorge Hernandez. Goes for this ball through and in. There's the go-ahead goal, striking late once again in the 85th. Flip it. Deservedly so. The heroics. The go-ahead from Lambert. I am living for those acrobatics right now. What a celebration! So well deserved. Jorge did end up going backside. I expect nothing less. He's a guy with the most quality of services, but it's Mitch Tainer back there who redirects it into the mix. Lambert is there to finish it. And man, one heck of a celebration. Beautiful job. This right in the mix. Kevin Lambert calls for quiet and nails the landing. Ten from the judges. Right, still just a few minutes ago to that 90 minute mark, but they just might be a, a late goal scoring team here. I mean, we're only three games in, so they but the pattern a, is the pattern a is proving itself. for the heroic. Yeah. This group thus far, they're showing late. I mentioned two goals have been scored in extra time in the second half. Four of their six had come in the second half. Though they did beat us in terms of the scout with an early goal tonight. So one in the seventh, one in the 85th. Manley in the seventh. Lambert strikes there off the service from Hernandez that found Tainer. Put the ball in front where yeah, good things happen. Who needs to watch novelas when you can just come to an SAFC matchup? Especially on a Saturday night when it's dollar beer night. Yeah. Only the most dramatic of things can happen with beer night. I'm sure, it's a lot of fun out there in the crowd. Coach Marcin has a big bear hug tackle from behind. 
don't know if it was out of frustration, send a message, but Coach Marcina had talked about resiliency, resiliency for this team. It's been a different type of resiliency in the three matches thus far, but this has been a hard-fought match that at many junctures could have gone in the favor of Monterey Bay, but the resiliency, the capitalization for San Antonio to go ahead 2-1. Still some work to do, though. Right, and Jorge Hernandez here in another similar position. Can they do it again? That we'll have to see. As the smell of sulfur still lingering from the second goal, three minutes ago from Lambert. Not a bad clearance there from Mitch just to get some space. Fidel not happy with the pulling on his jersey there. Can't help but wonder if some of these substitutions have happened to prevent a double yellow and a missed next game either. The breakdown coming into this one, one goal scored between the 46th and 60th, one between the 61st and 75th, can add another, so two between the 76th and 90th, and then two in second half stoppage time, goes along with the two goals that have been in the first 15 minutes. San Antonio has not scored a goal from 16 minutes till halftime, so I'll have to ask Coach Marcino what's <laughs> going on in that period. They opened strong, but this team is definitely developing an identity of not quit and finding another gear in the later minutes to approach 90 minutes in full time here and four will go on for stoppage talk a lot about mentality in general in sports and alan marcina i think that is the very first thing to get right is everyone bought in is everyone going to give their absolute best till the final whistle and it's getting that from his team time and time again. So, again, you got to hand it to him. Doesn't matter who's out there on the field. He knows how to really bring out their best. Yeah, you talk culture for a program, culture for a club, and how that's passed down even when the names change. But I think guys like Mitchell Tainer, Carter Manley, Two big pieces on the back line. They've been good is working to try to find some space to shoot as Manley cuts off the angle. And that threat is squashed. It's a good point. Tater and uh, Mitch Tater and Carter Manley are really that core piece there for SAFC. They carry over the good stuff from last season and they've brought it here. And that's exactly who you want on your back line, too. You don't want anybody who's thinking twice about anything on the back line. And one thing I can say is they move out of the back with confidence. Name two, we talked change in the starting lineup with Shannon Gomez coming back from international duty and what that veteran presence would bring. He's been all over, name called so many times tonight, both defensively, offensively. Gomez getting back into the fold. Couple of minutes though to try to register win number two on four tries is Omar, the player down right now. The cramping hour, as they say. hydration and work those calf muscles out. Ref trying to keep things peaceful. <laughs> also too with the time dwindling Monterey Bay saying hey let's, let's get on with this. No more content to receive all the service. Hydration fluids, Pedialyte, water. What's your choice? If you're down on the pitch, it's up to him. Right. How about you? I'd hope it'd be some electrolytes if you're cramping out there. 
there's a pill that you can take and uh, there's actually a running compilation of videos of people's facial expressions when they mm. take that pill because it's so disgusting. It's worse than a whiskey shot, right? Salty? Yeah, it's pure yeah. nasty salt, some sort of concoction that uncramps your muscles immediately. Pickle juice? You ever do pickle oh, juice? Oh, pickle juice is the best. I know some of our, our camera operators, I've heard camera operators across all sport, hot in the summer, they will go to the pickle juice to stay hydrated. Shout out to all of our camera operators bringing our shots this evening is San Antonio trying to put the bookend on this and head into Easter Sunday with their second victory on this young season. Two draws already last Saturday, a victory over Colorado Springs in a hard fought match and this one very much that could have gone the way of the Union. Many different junctures, but a little bit of luck a lot of grit. Has San Antonio up 2-1 in the dwindling moments. Nearing the end of the allotted extra time. Might be a little more. Yeah, probably another minute or two with time that Omar spent down. Does Union have one more push? Try to regather here. Antonio will come with a substitution. Coach Marcina had mentioned that Trova Boni has done so good in training that he's one of those guys who's just right on the cusp of also getting that starting position. Would you call that a trot from Hawkinson? <laughs> half a trot, half a trot. You're going to take his time over to be relieved by his teammate. So Trova Bonnie on, clock ticks, Siaha. That ball into the stands for a jubilant crowd. <laughs> How about that? Fan asked for it off the head and he headed it in. Back into the arms of Gomez. The whistle will blow, and San Antonio will get a very hard-earned, resilient second win of the season. And pending other results, these two teams were tied atop the table in the West, both with five points, but SAFC will get three out of this one, but they had to earn every single one of them. That they did, unfortunate there for Monterey Bay FC. Really did bring their best. We saw some really quality stuff from them for a good chunk of the game. SAFC had a really strong top of that first half, but going into the second half, they really had to make things happen there, which they did. So it was Carter Manley in the seventh with the bicycle kick. You had to wait to the 85th if you're a San Antonio fan for Kevin Lambert to score off what was a good service ball from Jorge Hernandez that found the head of Tanner back into the middle. But Katie, what were your overall takeaways? What did you learn about this team this match? Um, look, I've learned that they are truly a second half team. They can claw back when they have to. I think they might be a team that needs a little bit of pressure to start playing their best ball. Um, I know they're a team that can play up, but you want to be really playing your best stuff the full 90. I think we saw a bits and pieces there in the first half, some good stuff at the end of the second half, but how do you get that full, complete 90 as you make your way through season? San Antonio had some luck tonight as well. May want to take that with them as they will next be in action on April 6th at the Las Vegas Lights FC. We'll be back in action at home on April 13th against Orange County SC. So San Antonio tallies their second victory on this young season in just their fourth match for Katie Goodman, whole crew, Tyler Denning. Good night from San Antonio.
Thank mm -hmm. you. 